Greetings, culture warriors. It's Jeff Vieira, author of Culture Is Everything, and your host for this Dispatch from the Front. Today, we got another real barn beater story. I would uh, recommend that anyone who has high blood pressure and loves America, uh, you might want to take aspirin before listening to this podcast. Go ahead and pause it, get your aspirin, blood thinners if you're taking them, and then come back. So I'll give you a little bit of a, a warning in advance. Today, the headline from MSN News, this is originally from The Hill. Bezos says he's happy to lose customers over his Black Lives Matter support. This is by Joe Concha. Amazon founder and CEO Jeff Bezos says he's happy to lose some business over his support of the Black Lives Matter movement, a remark that came in response to a customer's racist rant. Bezos posted the customer's email on Instagram over the weekend, redacting both the sender's last name and use of a racial slur. The customer, whose first name is listed as Dave, said he was withdrawing an order after hearing about Bezos' support for the Black Lives Matter movement. I was placing an order with your company when I discovered your statement in support for Black Lives Matter, the customer wrote. Maintain your stance and we will watch your profits decline and laugh about it. My business relationship with you is over. Bezos responded by sharing a screenshot of the email saying, This sort of hate shouldn't be allowed to hide in the shadows. It's important to make it visible. This is just one example of the problem. And Dave, you're the kind of customer I'm happy to lose. Bezos, who is also owner of the Washington Post, recently pledged $10 million on behalf of Amazon's behalf to organizations that work for social justice. The inequitable and brutal treatment of black and African Americans is unacceptable, the company wrote Wednesday in a blog post. We believe Black Lives Matter. We stand in solidarity with our black employees, customers, and partners and are committed to helping build a country and a world where everyone can live with dignity and free from fear. A sep- in a separate email exchange shared by Bezos, a customer argued that all lives matter. I support this movement we see happening all around us. My stance won't change, Bezos wrote in response. The back and forth comes amid mass protests around the U.S. over the police killing of George Floyd, an un- unarmed black man who died in Minneapolis after a now fired officer knelt on his neck for almost nine minutes. The officer is facing second-degree murder and second-degree manslaughter charges. Three other officers at the scene were charged with aiding and abetting after being fired. Okay, so what we do on this podcast, as listeners uh, who have been with us before know, is we take news articles like this and we dissect them from the lens of culture and the values that comprise that culture. Uh, In the book, My definition for culture is the means by which an organization's values are communicated, understood, and lived. So what we're seeing here, and uh, what the crux of my analysis is going to be, is the culture as lived. Now, first off, let me just state in general. uh, One of the topics that we keep returning to is... American values. What do we mean by American values? These are the time-honored values enshrined in our founding documents, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution of the United States, and so much that's been written about them down the centuries since, which embody an identifiable American culture. It's one that, despite the claims of many down the years, has not really changed since 1776. And probably earlier, truth be told. So when we look at those, that American, those American values, one of these is freedom of speech. We deeply prize liberty. One of the liberties that we value most is that we are allowed, as Americans, to say and think as we choose. We are free. Does this mean that every American is correct, however you define correctness in that regard? No. Does it mean that every American is noble or virtuous in what they believe? 
The answer is no. But what it does mean is that every American has the right to believe however wrongly you may feel they believe and state their beliefs. It's fundamental truth of America, sorry. It is deeply un-American then to hold that there are things that you can say and things you can believe which simply put you outside the rights of an American. You're an American citizen. You can believe whatever you want. You are free. Except if you believe as we don't want you to believe. And that is where Amazon and so many of these tech companies have absolutely lost their way. They are no longer American. And I give this to you as evidence. Now, I haven't seen the first article. I believe the uh, email that Bezos released, I believe the article has it right when they said that he used a racial slur. And I believe that using a racial slur is a bad thing. I don't agree with it. Don't agree with racism. Don't agree with bigotry. Don't agree with the use of racial slurs. Do I agree with Jeff Bezos? taking that private communication and without permission, posting it on the internet. No, I do not. That was sent to Jeff Bezos. That was supposedly a private communication. The bigot in question had an expectation of privacy and Bezos violated it to score points, virtue signaling in public displays an immaturity on Bezos's part. Likewise, I doubt that the second customer who used no racial slur gave him permission to print his email, which was simply pointing out that all lives matter. An important note, I might add, because it's not just black lives which are being lost in these riots. It's black lives, it's Latino lives, it's white lives, all lives under the rainbow. People are getting killed in these riots, and it doesn't matter what race they are. They don't deserve to die for being in the street. That seems to be lost on Jeff Bezos and his crowd. When we say all lives matter, It is not to say that black lives matter less. It is to note that you are missing a focus on other people who are being hurt in all of this. Note that in the riots, the people whose businesses are being smashed, the people who are being attacked in the streets, are not the people who were kneeling on George Floyd's back and neck. Those people are being protected. The people who are being hurt and having their businesses and homes destroyed are not the politicians running these cities and their bureaucrats who have allowed police abuse to fester in many of these communities. The people being hurt and having their businesses and property destroyed are not the police officers who, the vast majority of which, neither condone nor take part in any sort of police abuse. And it's easy for Jeff Bezos, with his mansions and his gates and his security, living in Seattle where he is protected, to come out and mouth off. What makes it particularly despicable on Jeff Bezos' part are two things. Number one, when Jeff Bezos started running around on his wife, there was some communications that he had with her that were leaked, and he made a big stink about it. He was outraged. How dare you? Apparently linked by her family, trying to stop the relationship. He had a very different view of privacy when it was his privacy than he does when it comes to customers who email him. He puts them out there dangled in front of the mob so that anyone who can do a little research on the internet can figure out who they are, 
and punish them for their beliefs. Again, I don't share the beliefs. Well, the second one, I probably do. I do believe that all lives matter is an important message and that we shouldn't be dividing Americans up into different categories based on something as arbitrary as skin color. We apparently haven't learned anything in 200 years. But who can blame us? The party that originally started blaming everything on skin color back in the day has never paid a price for it. And they're running the riots today. As you can tell by the fact that their officials go out in the midst of the rioters without fair. Why without fair? Because they're the ones giving the orders, my friends. But Jeff Bezos can sit there and complain, you know, release, dox people, release the private communications, dangle it in front of the mob. He can do that with impunity. Why? Because Jeff Bezos is protected. He's protected. And he'll be protected so long as he mouths the correct pieties going forward. But does he really believe them? No. And that's the second objection I have to this little communication from Amazon's founder. He doesn't believe a word of it. And how can I justify that? Because you've seen report after report after report of how he treats Amazon's employees in their operation, many of whom are black. They've had to have walkouts. They've had people die. There's been all sorts of problems that he refuses to do a damn thing about in his operation. I had a little insight into why that is. I was talking to one of his Amazonians who told me that there was a caste system in place at Amazon. And that certain people only go so far. That's the Amazon culture. I was a great admirer of Amazon. I'd been with Amazon since they were just selling books. I had a long-lasting relationship uh, with Amazon, and I admired the company greatly, right up until I found that out. And so you tell me, what Bezos actually values. You tell me. He's jumping on a bandwagon and given that he is now publisher of the major newspaper in the capital where there have been prevalent riots where the mayor of the, D of the District of Columbia has refused to protect the national monuments in her charge And Bezos, the publisher of the paper of record in that town, is stoking the fires as best he can. So you tell me what Mr. Bezos values. If you find it in the list of those 14 values that Amazon touts, I will be shocked. Perhaps there has been added a 15th. But what is there, and the value that they typically continue to continue to say is the one they are proudest of, is customer focus. And I got news for you, friend. Firing your customers is not customer focus. You're the kind of customer I'm happy to do without. Okay, great. That works both ways. You know, Amazon has benefited disproportionately from the lockdown and from the riots. And the reason for that is because as people are afraid to go out of their houses, they can't support brick and mortar retailers. They can't support local businesses. They're not open. If they are open, it's too dangerous to go there. So reflect on that and see if you can't figure out what Jeff Bezos actually values. As for me, I value e-commerce companies that are not Amazon.com, and I personally will start moving my business elsewhere. 
Not because Jeff Bezos supports this or that, but because he's a damned hypocrite. Have a great day.